It's not the most well-known Genesis game, but with 30 plus hours worth of meticulous decision making, Warsong is a strategy lover's dream. The game is best described as a turn-based battle simulator, with a little bit of RPG on the side. You control a party of military commanders. In the beginning, you only have two, but new commanders join your quest as you progress through the game. Just before a battle begins, you are briefed on what the winning and losing conditions are. Then you assign each of the commanders an army. There are limits on the type and number of soldiers you give them, and part of that depends on how much money you have. You can also equip each commander with one item. Once the battle has begun, you start moving each commander and his or her army around the grid. It takes some time to move all the individual pieces, but you can automate some parts of the process to speed things up. Once you've exhausted your moves, you end the turn. Then the computer opponent starts moving its pieces. The computer's forces are structured the same as yours. A group of commanders, each with their own army. The only difference is that the computer tends to use more monster-like soldiers. Typically, soldiers would need to stay in close proximity to their commanders since doing so grants the soldiers offensive and defensive bonuses during combat. Commanders can either sit back and allow their soldiers to do the work, or they can fight in the battles themselves. Having your commander fight does carry some risk though, since if they die, they're not just dead for the rest of the battle, they're dead for the rest of the game. If this happens, it's best to just hit the reset button and play from your last save. Also, when a commander dies, all the soldiers under his or her command die as well. This may tempt you to attack enemy commanders directly from the onset, but you gain more experience points if you take the time to kill all their soldiers first. Besides, commanders are very powerful and killing them isn't easy. Once one of your commanders racks up enough experience, they move up to a more powerful class of your choosing. Only certain classes are available to certain characters. One character can even become a king. These more powerful classes give each character better stats, new spells, and new types of soldiers to choose from when assembling their army. As you can tell, it's a highly detailed game, and if you need further evidence, just look at some of the large fan-made strategy guides on the internet, like this one right here. These strategy guides say a lot about the game's depth, but it also shows how dedicated the fans are to the game. Warsong does take a long time to play. A single battle can last an hour or two. While some might say this makes the battles feel more epic, others will say that's way too long. The good thing is that you can save at any time, so you don't have to complete the battle in one sitting. Also, as I mentioned before, there are ways to automate your movements to make the game go faster. Other parts of the game cannot be sped up, like the battle animations. They aren't skippable either. Surprisingly, the game doesn't have a two-player mode, but it's understandable when you consider how long one turn can last. Nobody's gonna want to wait on the other player to move their 40 or so pieces. Still, it would have been nice to play on the evil side, since they have all the cool monsters. If this game intrigues you, you may want to check out its numerous sequels. The only catch is that you'll need to know how to read Japanese, since none of them got a Western release. Warsong is a must-have for fans of turn-based strategy games. And even if you aren't a fan of the genre, don't be afraid to give it a try anyway. It's one of the most addictive and deepest experiences you can have on the Genesis.